started. So as always, let's start with agenda bashing. If there is something you would like in the meeting that you would like the opportunity to talk about, uh, please add it on. Okay, so today, so we have uh, our event in uh, December 10th or 13th, KubeCon Seattle. So we have we have a couple talks that have been accepted into into KubeCon Seattle. So uh, a lot of the work going up to that is going to lead into trying to be, be prepared for for what we want to show off there. Uh, there is a network service mesh demo that Ed is going to talk about that we also want to uh, to prepare and. Uh, Simultaneously, we also want to see about getting some type of podcast and a blog set up. And we also have a submission to the FIDO Mini Summit that was put in by by Tom Herbert. And so uh, an announcement, a very important announcement. We are having a meeting change. And so the new meeting slot will be every, every week on Tuesday from 8 to 9 a.m. 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time. And so, uh, if you show up here on Friday, you'll have missed the uh, you'll have missed the meeting next week. Uh, and I will reannounce this again just in case we get someone new. So today is our last Friday meeting, and the primary driver for this is to uh, get people in from Europe. So a, a lot of people in Europe are are skipping out because of the uh, because of the very bad time for them. Yeah, there there are also some complaints from Israel. Um, so yes, it is. Um, my understanding is it's a, it's their weekend. It's even more aggressively bad for them than it is for Europe. I mean, it, it's it's one thing that we're asking the Europeans to basically, you know, come spend their Friday evening with us. It's even worse that we're asking, you know, the Israelis to. So, cool. Okay, so let's jump straight into the agenda. KubeCon demo brainstorming. So, yep. Um, you have the floor, Ed. Awesome. So, um, thank you for following the link. So. There's a lot of conversation going on around KubeCon demos for network service mesh. And, and I'll sort of start this by saying, by the way, that, that we've got a bunch of different companies who've piped up who are interested in showing network service mesh demos in their booths. Um, so if, if you represent a company that's going to have a booth at KubeCon and you want to show a network service mesh demo, we would love to make sure that happens. And so you know, we wanted to make sure we got broad feedback from the community um, as to sort of what this demo would look like. Because it takes effort to put together a demo and it's good to pull together towards them. And so somebody uh, earlier this week basically said, we should write down what we think we want to do for the demo. And so I took a first swag at drawing some pretty pictures for it. Uh, so we have something to discuss. So don't consider this the, this is what we're doing. Consider it more of, this was a conversation starter on the kinds of things that we would hope to be able to do, right? So. The, at the high level, we, we're sort of looking at a simple chaining demo, right? Where you've got some client pod that um, is going to consume a network service and that gets cross-connected remotely to some network service endpoint that then chains locally using MIF to some other network service endpoint. Now, it's important to note, I don't suspect we will have network service wiring for this. So this will be a little bit manual in how it gets put together in terms of, you know, the first NSC will actually be trying to connect to the second NSC. Um, but it's, I think it still would be kind of a cool demo at a high level because it sort of shows how these things can chain, be chained together by network service mesh. And, and this, this sort of begs the question a little bit, what do we use for the network service endpoints here? And we've got a couple of options for that. One of them is I know that the, the, the VNF CNF guys are putting together some chains of, of VNFs. We could definitely do some of that, and I think that would be cool. But I wanted to sort of also point out another option that we would have um, in slide two, which would be something that's roughly the story we tell about Saris v, uh, Secure Corporate Internet Gateway story, where you know basically you get a client pod that gets connected to a firewall that then connects to a VPN gateway, um, and this is. Kind of a cool story. People seem to like the uh, VPN gateway story. Um, and so that was one idea that I wanted to throw out there. Um, and then, you know, if we go on to the next slide, obviously we can make this more interesting by introducing some replicas. Um, 
and then you you sort of as you sort of stretch further out you get questions in slide four about things like how do you want to visualize could we maybe get something where we could visualize topology um if we succeed in getting auto healing going um could we um use that in order to show something like oh i kill off one of the replicas that i'm going to see and it comes back now obviously this is all coming in layers because we don't really know how much we're going to succeed in accomplishing in time for the kubecon demo but it, it, my experience has been that if you set up your goals in layers then you eventually get to some some piece in that stack where you don't succeed and then you fall back to the one before and you win so do other folks have other interesting ideas or comments or I mean, we're really trying to pick, figure out stuff we can come together as a community to pull towards. I, I actually, so I'll just chime in and reiterate that I that I really like the approach. I like the layered approach. Um, these seem like reasonable things to to strive towards, and I kind of particularly like. Uh, slide two because it ties directly into the narrative uh, that, that a few of us have, uh, you know, have been have been giving at various events and that. So it, it, that one seems particularly relevant just because it ties into the central narrative that we've been telling. I would also suggest Ed that somehow you bring in Kubernetes networking to show how where it resides in this. So it's not just um, NSM. There's also Kubernetes network. Ah, basically to show that, 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 that you, you know, if you, if you like your Kubernetes networking, you keep your Kubernetes networking. Well, um, you have them both, both running together. So I, the, I think there's two conditions. One is, you know, ships in the night, NSM plus Kubernetes working independently, which I think mm -hmm. is, is a useful use case. Then there's also where does Kubernetes networking intersect with NSM? Because that's pretty much more useful. So it's just my point of view. Oh, no, no, I, 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 I totally get you. You're basically, what if I wanted to stick my VPN gateway before my Kubernetes networking? Yeah. Yeah, no, that would be, that would be very interesting to look at. Um, have you thought about sort of what additional things we'd have to do to be able to show that? Oh, you, <laughs> yeah, you think about it, do it? Of course not. <laughs> no. no, no that, that, that's actually fair. Um, so, I mean, we can, we can sort of noodle on that and see what other things might need to be done. Um, yeah in order to get there. And I mean, the other thing I'd like to kind of do at this time is, and, and folks can feel free to chime in and tell me if I'm right or wrong. My sense is we got a lot of people in the community who would like to pick up a shovel and help. And they're trying to figure out exactly which shovel to pick up and which, where, to, where to go dig a hole. And so um, my hope is that um, by figuring out sort of the demo, we can break it up into pieces that various people can work on. Uh, so we can work a lot of together as a community in parallel. Um, does that make sense to folks? Does that line up with Am I reading the room right? Yes. Oh. Okay, cool. So cool. So we've got one suggestion that we may want to look at. Um, could we also do something that, that's a little more involved with, you know, in, interactive with Kubernetes networking uh, in this picture? And that's a very cool suggestion. Do other folks have other ideas or comments or other things? Hey, Ed, yeah, a couple of things. Um, number one, does the uh, direct memif between, um, I guess, the uh, pods and the nodes on the right, does that somehow, I mean, could people, if we're seeing like imagining cross connects, are we maybe doing something there that uh, people, I mean, if our job is to sort of reinforce the notion of cross connects to connect uh, pods in a network service. Are we, um, compromising that um, well, picture we're, we're, that people come away with? Let's talk about that. Let's, so, uh, Lucina, can we go back to slide one? Because I think this is kind of the slide you're talking to, which is, so we've got this direct memi up, which is just a cross connect to get set up between two network service endpoints. Um, I'm not quite sure. Could you maybe repeat your point? I didn't quite follow. Well, yeah, I guess visually, you know, we drop down to the data plane to, uh, you know, cross connect, if you will, the client pod on the left in node one and the uh, NSC uh, pod on the right in node two. Um, is the is the memf sort of consistent with this notion of, you know, dropping down into the data plane? Or do we just claim that the memif between uh, the two NSCs in, on the right in node two is in fact, um, you know, a cross connect, if you will? 
Yeah, I mean, I would tend to say the MemIF in this case is actually a cross connect. Um, okay. Obviously, you know, that, that has to get set up somehow. And th there, there's an interesting set of work that's going on um, with data planes that I think hopefully we'll get to some of that next week. But yeah, in my mind, a direct, a direct MemIF is just another kind of cross connect. Right. Um, you know, between things. Okay, and then secondly, I totally agree with the, uh, uh, with the notion of uh, having this uh, at least uh, be present in a, in a, in a Kubernetes networking uh, space. Mm -hmm. If we can, right, because people are somewhat familiar with that idea and this sort of does something different and, um, you know, ships in the night, if you like your CNI, you can keep your CNI. But at the same time, if we want to uh, set up network services um, and achieve all of what we're hoping to do here, then um, we, we can indicate that, hey, this is in a Kubernetes environment and um, you can start to take advantage of it. <coughs> cool. Got it. Got it. Um, uh, I, go ahead. Uh, and if I could, uh, I mean, I see it from a little bit different angle um, because one of the kind of a key point, at least uh, I, I saw on the SIG networking uh, during the SIG, net, SIG net, networking meeting is that, I mean, we are orthogonal to the CNI. What my concern is that if we somehow try to show NSM and the CNI together, it might send uh, people a wrong message that we're trying to do something with the existing CNI. I think, I mean, at least in my opinion, we should uh, be 100% clear that we're not doing, we're not changing anything on the CNI side. So it's completely independent. It can do whatever it wants. No, I, I think that's yeah. also a good point. Um, I think that's also a good point. I mean, it, and part of it may just be uh, sort of stages of things. I mean, when we're first showing people this stuff working, um, then, then it may be best to um, sort of show, I mean, I, I, to show, yes, your CNI is still there, it still does its thing, and show the orthogonality at first, because I think people are going to require a little bit of comfort before um, showing, you know, potentially any kind of interaction between, you know, with direct Kubernetes um, networking stuff. So um, I, I, I totally get that point, too. Um, Cool. So I, I do have a question also for the, the CNF, VNF CNF guys, which is if you look at this picture in slide one, right? Um, other than the fact that I think you guys are looking for longer chains than just two, um, is this the kind of picture that you guys are wanting to have as well uh, for your chains of CNFs? I think it is, it is at least one of them. Um, we're looking at doing it in two different ways now. I think we have the direct MEMIF connection similar to what you're showing on uh, Node 2 here. But we're also, we're also looking into doing this kind of snake testing where we always um, switch our context switch through VPP between chains. But that's mainly so we can compare MEMIF to vhost. <laughs> Since if you, those, those direct connections, they're good, but they're, they're it's kind of cheating when comparing to to vhost. Right, right. I mean, it, it's sort of a um, in addition to the fact that it's faster, we've also done something smarter than vhost can do. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and and and, and I, I can understand that. So okay, so I, I I get that point that effectively you have a situation where um, you'd want to be able to do both direct MIF cross connects and that also you know MIF cross connected through the VPP data plane. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. But other than that, you know, are these the kinds of cross connects that you guys are looking for? Those being MIF, VXLAN, and I, I suspect you guys aren't going to use kernel interface, but um, are those the kinds of things you guys are looking for? I, I guess so. Um, yeah, so right now we're not using VXLAN, we're not using kernel interfaces, but I guess as, as we progress and get things a little more complicated, we might at least need to look into to VXN at some point. Okay. Yeah, it should be easy to swap out the uh, the kernel interface with uh, with MemIF because we have to build it out for Node 2 anyway. So uh, so I think the primitives will be there. It's just a matter of specifying the correct, uh, uh, the, the correct mechanism. Yeah, I, I was thinking of MemIF and vhost. Yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to do vhost, that's that's great. Um, I I don't have any experience with that, um, but but yeah, I mean that's that's the nice thing. Um, and we should probably get a, an actual a couple of things that I think we want to actually also capture here is 
maybe something about Sergey's data plane work in the agenda and something about Andre's work on packet.net um, CI, because I, I think we kind of, they'd somehow gotten filed under the event and we kind of skipped past them. But I, I think as, as the work that Sergey has done with the data plane lands, that other people should be able to add mechanisms pretty easily to it. That's what I'm hoping for. And, um, you know, I know that uh, Sergey, there was Sergey merged another, another commit that added uh, some more proto definitions as well um, uh, the other day, and I think that will help. Yes. Yes. Cool. All right. So, anything else that folks want to chat, you know, suggest around the demo? I think, you know, this has been really, really helpful. Um, and are, are there any folks on the call who are interested in sort of moving the ball forward on some of these items for the demo? Well, I'm difficult. Then, I'm not, well, not, oh, sorry, you go on. I didn't, under, I didn't understand the last couple of words. Uh, oh, of, are there people who are interested in, so part of getting to a demo is you break it up into smaller pieces that people can work on. Um, and I was just curious who on the call might be interested in picking one of those pieces up. Well, uh, Ed and others, I've got that 185 um, issue. And it's really like one half of it really is in slide one. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I still want to see if I can actually just take I, I mean, I just want to do something simple initially, partially it's to educate myself because, you know, my understanding of Kubernetes isn't anywhere near as profound as uh, others in this group. And so I want to keep it um, simple just to make it easy to, to set up and something that other people can leverage from maybe. I don't know. I hope I can get even that done. But that's my goal is to just do uh, if, I recall, if, I recall, if I recall, you're working on a bridge NSE, which is goodness. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, rather than, and, and to me, that's not much different than what's here because here we have VXLAN and separate nodes. But rather, I would just, you know, um, yep. you know, which is conceptually the same. But cool, excellent. So yeah, if anybody else wants to sort of pick up a shovel and help on some of these items for the demo, please feel free to reach out. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of, I'm, I'm desperately trying to break these out into issues as I go, but as you probably noticed, I'm really terrible at that. Um, so. Yeah, something I can do is I can set up the initial uh, deployment and pod structures and set up the initial entry points so to make it easy for people to start working on, on those independently. So basically, come up with, have on two nodes, set it up so that one pod lands on one node, the other two pods land on the other node entry points are are clear so, you know basically set up some structure for people to to start implementing things um, and uh, that will lead into the next part which is how do we land how do we land vpp on that particular on that particular system so we can start setting we can start working towards uh, getting this set up in the in the ci system uh, as well well which there's already been a lot of work towards that so it would just be a matter of of leveraging some of that work that's been done by the uh, other members of the community. Oh, VPP, uh, VPP will come will come with as uh, within the, the data plane, so it's bundled. So basically, all you need is just to start a pod, data plane pod, and uh, VPP will start as a sidecar container and serves uh, pretty much all the requests from the local NSM on the same node. So the, the only thing is that, I mean, your host must support huge pages and the kubelet should be able to discover them because that's the requirement. Is a, is a sidecar the best place to land? I mean, it's okay for at the moment, but is, is it the best place to land it? You, you, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, it goes uh, along with the micro uh, microservice architecture. So we, we, have to be um, little, we have to be a little bit careful about the use of the word sidecar because the, the, there are a bunch of different things that people mean when they, they say sidecar at varying degrees of precision. So let me sort of be really, really straightforward. I think what Sergey is talking about is there is a pod that contains a VPP data plane 
It also contains the necessary, you know, agent machinery so that it can expose the data plane interface that the network service manager can then talk to. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason I say this is I used to get myself wrapped around the, the, the flagpole because when I said sidecar, I meant very specifically a second, another container running in the same pod, which is kind of what really does happen. But I've, I've discovered that lots of people don't use the term sidecar that way. They use it more broadly and that's perfectly valid. So uh, I didn't want to disambiguate because it felt a little like we might be talking a tiny bit past each other. Yeah, no, that, that's that's perfect. So yeah, we'll we'll make use of uh, we'll make use of that then. But I'll I'll start setting up the uh, the proper deployments in Kubernetes and so on in order to in order to make it easier for people to join in because I I get the feeling a lot of people uh, like even just landing your pods in Kubernetes can be can be fun when you have don't have that experience. Okay, cool, cool. Hey, uh, Ed. I'd, maybe I can take it up a layer or two, but I'd be happy to help out with the, um, you know, sort of demo flow and, um, you know, how we might, you know, choreograph this thing and um, maybe help design, you know, some sort of simple uh, GUI if we yep. want to have, have that. No, and a simple GUI, that would be a huge help because one of the things that would be lovely to do is just to be able to let people visualize the topology of network services, you know, the, the connections between network services. That right. was kind of epically awesome. Um, and, and the other thing that was kind of running through my head is if we get the auto healing working, uh, which is definitely a stretch at this point, but if we got it working, if you, if you would let people kill off network service endpoints in the chain, sort of video game style, so they could see the auto healing working, that would be unbelievably epic. You know, you kill a network service endpoint and the connections get rerouted to rep other replicas, that would be kind of epic. If if you want to go with an easy integration, there's a there's a Gopher Bash game, uh, and they've act and the Kubernetes team actually has a physical uh, arcade game where you bash the Gophers and it, and it kills containers that represent each Gopher. And <laughs> so we could we we if we reached out to them and so show them we had this amazing demo that uh, that did that maybe, maybe they'd be kind enough to lend us some some hardware, but at least the, the, the software to run it is open source. There's a virtual version of it that you can point and click. Awesome. All right, cool. Anything else on the demo before we move on? I know we've got a ton of other stuff to cover here. Um, so just one, I'll just make one quick mention. Uh, I won't take much time, but uh, I'm actually working on that, that second one, um, the, the VPN side. Um, I'm working on the, the integration for that, so. Okay, cool. So you're working on VPN, the building a VPN gateway NSC? Exactly. Oh, very sexy. Cool. Okay. So is, is there any last comments on this or should we move on to the uh, data plane API documentation? Okay, data plane API documentation. So uh, it has me listed as the uh, the lead on this, but uh, I think uh, that's that's I think actually probably me, and I apologize. I've not made any great progress on that uh, this week. No worries. Uh, should we punt it till next week then? Yep. Okay, punted. Um, okay, so comments in the abstract section. Uh, do you, is that's also looks like it's the same. Is yeah, the same I, I think you probably should punt it along in the same way. Um, you, you probably even just incorporate those two together. Okay. Um, those, are, uh, those are the same NSM API document in different sections, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So X factor CNF updates. So I have uh, mostly moved over the, uh, the code from the Ruby-based server to Hugo, and I've added two links to the agenda. So one of them is the link to the um, to the GitHub repo where it's currently living, and the second one is a staging environment where you can see the uh, see the result. Uh, please pardon the uh, uh, the theme. I just picked a, a random theme that sort of looked half good, uh, but there's some problems with the structure of the theme. That, uh, that I'm not particularly happy with that I need to either change or replace later on, uh, especially around the wording. So it, 
the thing was written for performance was helped by making your text uh, be more sparse and longer and increasing increasing margin size. So it looks like you wrote a lot more than you really did, which makes the uh, which which gives us the wall of text uh, effect when you read the introduction. So I need to make some changes on that. Uh, but uh, the thing that I would love some some help on is in two areas. So one is the th there's some new sections uh, that were added in uh, on the bottom, which are the uh, parts that uh, that relate to the CNF itself. So the first question is, uh, are does this look good? Does it look sufficient? Read them, comment on them, please. Uh, if you see, if you think there should be any changes, uh, a pull request is uh, is more than uh, more than welcome, and we can start working on this on this uh, documentation to get it up to speed. The second one is I went through a really cursory review of the first twelve, and I made some some modifications on the first twelve to talk about the X factor CNF rather than twelve factor apps, and uh, trying to remove things that uh, that were not relevant, such as the HTTP port binding for all communication. Uh, but something that would be really, really helpful if someone has the time to do so would be to read through each of those and modify them in so that they're using technologies and databases and so on that are much more relevant uh, to the CNF community. So for example, I doubt that anyone in the CNF community is gonna be making a Ruby-based CNF. Uh, more likely we'll see C, Go maybe some rest or or so on, and so uh, these things need to be uh, refactored to be more relevant to the to the CNF community. And the third thing is that there may be sections or things that I did not talk about uh, additional additional rules and and so on that uh, that we should look at. And so if if there's something that is that is missing that you strongly think should uh, should be a part of it. Uh, Let's start, let's start the conversation on on that, so we can talk about like, is it appropriate? What should it, what should, what message should we put forward, or or so on? Uh, so in a nutshell, I'll give people time to to understand and, and so on, and uh, feel free to to uh, start making uh, suggestions and requests within the uh, within the pull requests. Um, are there any uh, any questions in this scenario? I think it's a good start. Hmm, thank you. Yeah, and if anyone's good at, uh, H H at HTML and CSS and so on, I would also love some help with the theme. So that's not my strong point. Like I can do it, but it'll take me a little bit of a little bit more time than it would if someone who is experienced with it. There's another area you can help with that. Okay, well, if there's no questions on on this, then let's move forward because we still have a bit to talk about. Um, so last week we pumped it. We punted uh, Romkey's uh, Kubernetes network policy uh, discussion. So uh, is Romkey here? Doesn't look like it, so maybe we'll punt it again. Okay, so we have two updates. One, uh, the first one was Sergey on the update to the data plane work. So, uh, Sergey, you have the part. All right. So, <clears throat> um, I pushed a PR which introduces the uh, VPP data, VPP based data plane. Uh, at this point, it has a fairly limited uh, functionality in a sense that uh, it interconnects just uh, local ports. So along with that uh, PR, there were some um, changes done to the uh, data plane API, but they were done uh, in agreement with Ed, so it, won't, it, it doesn't contradict to what uh, Ed is working like on the global data plane a a API. So it's it's safe to use, like if you decide to uh, develop anything in that area. Well, to be a little bit more specific, Sergey apparently has much better taste in naming of things than I do, and, and so <laughs> things like you know, things you know, things with deeply counterintuitive names like mechanism one and mechanism two, 
became local mechanism or local source and destination. Um, so, you know, overall it's goodness. All right, yeah, thanks. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the model is the following. So in the port, data plane port, it's kind of a controller. There are two containers. One container runs a uh, latest VPP code with a very default configuration. So there are not too many changes. And then there is another container that runs the agent. So agent, it's some sort of an interface between the NSM and uh, VPP. Uh, it, it, it runs the gRPC server, which is, which is serving that API I mentioned earlier. So there are two, two requests now, connect request and delete request. Uh, and on the connect request, we are passing um, a map with the strings, uh, which are basically parameters for that connection. And currently, uh, there are several parameters like the namespace, a uh, process ID of the container that is requesting the connection. And we also can pass the IP addresses, which VPP will uh, apply to the <clears throat> cross connect between, uh, between two containers. Um, it's working perfectly in my, um, in my test environment, uh, but in CI it won't work right away because as I said, it requires the huge pages configuration. Without huge pages, VPP will not work. So once it's done, hopefully soon on the uh, packet, um, packet.net, then we'll be able to do the CI and test them uh, uh, in the CI. I do have a question for the VNF CNF guys, which is, I know you were using your cross-cloud CI scripts. Do they enable the huge pages stuff or are we shortly going to have something that does? Currently, they do not. Um, Hopefully that's something we can roll back in to the main cross-cloud CI as far as that support um, in the next two weeks based on what we're currently doing. We're working on that right now. Okay, cool, cool. All right, that's it for me. If you have questions, please ask. Cool. So that, that's actually awesome work. It provides a good framework as people want to add additional mechanisms in the next week or so. Um, the, the one I'm probably, I, I think people are most interested in right now is the MIF mechanism next, which is going to be awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in MIF. So pretty happy to see that, uh, see that happening fast. Um, okay. So um, Andre, you uh, do you have an update on the uh, packet.net CI? Yes, uh, I made the PR with code which uh, deploys uh, Kubernetes cluster in packet.net thanks to cross uh, cloud project and run all the integration tests uh, on the servers uh, deployed in packet.net. And right now we are finishing cloud, uh, Circle CI uh, configuration to run this uh, to run this in Circle CI uh, continuous integration. I think probably that this is a good thing for two reasons. One is it keeps us, you know, the Circle C is sort of orthogonal to the current stuff we're doing with Travis, which I think is good. But the second one is I think Circle C is much better at parallel uh, jobs, basically fanning out jobs. And one of the things I think we're going to find is that because the cross-cloud CI stuff scales across a bunch of public clouds, as time goes on, we'll get CI, you know, on not only just on packet.net, but we'll also get it on AWS and GCE and Azure and all these other places. And so being able to easily parallelize, I think Circle C is probably going to be better for it. It's also easier to, uh, I think, pay them for, for better features and support over time as well. So there's yep. a easier yeah, integration that, in this area. That is definitely huge. And they have some interesting debug capability as well. For example, you can you can kind of hold the nodes if you want to you know, log into them via SSH and debug some things much easier than with Travis. Oh, cool. Awesome. 
So thank you, Andre. I'm, I'm looking forward to that landing. I know you're you're so close. Um, and you and Kyle are just sorting out some credential issues. So yeah, thank you. Cool. Well, yeah, and then then probably it, it sounds like we we do want to figure out. Uh, Sergey, could you reach out to Andre about what has to happen as well to enable the huge pages stuff? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's just uh, basically just simple configuration in the bo bootloader on the host OS, and that's it. The rest should be automatic as long as you're using the recent uh, Kubernetes version. So it doesn't require any gate flags or anything. My, my, my recollection, Sergey, is that the huge pages stuff is enabled. Like, I, I, that there's huge pages stuff on packet enabled by default in terms of bootloader pieces. So I think we're probably okay for the bootloader. Now, what was the second piece? Oh, no, nothing. I mean, if if we have, like if you do cat pro uh, mem info and you see the huge pages, then Kublet will be able to discover them and serve them. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I, 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 actually, I actually have done that before on packet. So in, unless that is something that varies from type to type of, of node, we should be good. So that's goodness. If you can uh, type in the command in the uh, agenda, I'll go on one of the running systems and uh, and type it out and see. Because they have a they have a system they put on hold uh, while they were debugging uh, an issue for us, uh, and I can just log into that and uh, and check to see if huge pages is enabled. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Cool. Thank you. And uh, it is, this will also be something good that we can document in the um, in like when, once we uh, once we get better documentation for for data planes as they start to as we start to uh, build that out. Uh, this is something that we should probably make sure that we that we add in. Uh, I'm not sure what the right way to track that is though, considering we we don't have a place to land it yet. Uh, maybe maybe we'll make a GitHub issue for it. Anyways. Uh, other than that, is, is there any other questions then on the uh, on the update to the packet.net CI? Great, thank you very much, Andre. Um, let's see for the action items. Uh, I I haven't updated the action or the uh, the agenda board this week. I'm going to jump back into uh, grooming and maintaining the uh, the project board um, again since it's. Uh, it's proved valuable in the past. So an action item for me is going to be getting the agenda board back uh, back on track. And uh, we'll, we'll start using it again on the uh, starting Tuesday. Uh, anyways, before we before we finish up, uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss before we before we yield back uh, time? Um, if anything, there is, I added like a, a quick entry in the bottom of the list, I guess, below the, the announcement as well. And I just had a quick talk with Maciek as well. So I guess he wanted to, to keep this as a, a weekly occurrence with just the, the VNFC and then CNF demo comparison update. Um, okay, go for it. Yeah, well, it, it's quite quick, I guess. It's um, we're, we're working on getting the single chain with multiple network functions up and running in, in three different configurations. So we have the, the VNF, um, that, that connects in and context, which is between VPP and the, the network function for each each network function in a chain. And for CNFs, we have both both the, the context switched that we discussed um, a little while ago, and we have the, the directly connected MIF interfaces. Um, and I think right now we're just finishing up some, some modifications to the scripts to, to fully support them with, with the configuration we need. Then we're going to run some benchmarks and then we've just started doing some templating or getting the templating started to actually make this a little easier to run for anyone without having to go through uh, all of our quickly put together bash scripts. You're the right, very good directions, Michael, but, but it's very appreciated that you, you are producing things that don't require reading them. <laughs> um, uh, Michael, uh, I have a quick question. I mean, you mentioned yes. that you have a um, MIF plugged into the VPP, right? Yes. So is it done in the bash scripting or uh, it's done in, uh, in the, let's say, Go code or? 
it's it's bash scripts right now. And what we do is we, we use the bash scripts to generate um, VPP configurations that we just load. Um, uh, so basically you're using bin API to, to talk to the VP, uh, VPP, right? Yes, yes. W would it be possible to share those scripts? Because basically the sequence uh, in the Go code would be very, very similar. So instead of, you know, scratching my head and trying to figure out how it should be done, I mean, I could probably use that uh, as a Absolutely. guide. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Um, everything, everything is in the uh, CNCS, CNS repo. Um, so we have, a com most of it is under a comparisons folder. There's three main subfolders. Um, I, I don't know if we've renamed uh, Mike the, the new folder, but it's been CNF V edge throughput, and that's where the most recent, there's actually three comparison sets that we've done under there, but all of the bash scripts and everything else, you can see some other top levels that we're adding things to. But if you go in there, that CNF has throughput at the bottom, that's gonna be the most relevant stuff, including the VPP V switch. So that's the host level configuration. Um, which will have a lot of information on the MIF and other setup at the host level. And then inside of the VEDGE is, which is maybe maybe the wrong name, but it's the network function for, uh, can, can you go up one folder? Yeah, the VEDGE. We have the CNF and VNS, so that's going to have the um, both the VM side and the container set up for how we connect. And those MIF interfaces are mounted in the container right now. Great, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think if you have any questions, just just send us an email. Um, I think we've we've gone through enough of weird box and whatnot now that that we should be able to answer. Okay, nice. Uh, so is there any more on this topic or uh, have we, um, should we, should we move on? Uh, I think, I think we've, we've gone through it all now. Yeah. Okay. In that scenario, um, was there anything else that anyone else would like to, uh, to discuss? Okay. So um, again, before I close it out, just uh, a reminder again, uh, show up next Tuesday, not, uh, not next Friday, same time, different, uh, just different day of the week. So, uh, so the next meeting then will be on the 16th and I will contact Prem to get it all changed up on the calendar. Uh, and uh, Ed, one thing that we should do as well is make sure that uh, there's no issues with uh, Zoom if, to, uh, if Zoom has a specific time schedule that the meeting comes up and down on. I will, I will go and inquire. I suspect probably not, given that, that we have our own URL, but I will definitely go ask. Yeah, I suspect not as well. Just, I prefer not to have a surprise. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that. <laughs> <laughs> We probably will have an issue with scheduling again the meeting once we get to U.S. the end of U.S. daylight savings time. So uh, that's a good point. Confuse everything. I don't know whether we want to consider pegging at um, at uh, UTC uh, now at this time, so everybody get used to. I I, I find generally speaking that, that my experience has been that pe meetings pegged to UTC. Um, well, basically, you, 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 meetings pegged to UTC are, are not, not particularly any better than worse than pegged to any particular time zone. The real trick is to peg to a time zone, right? Um, and so, because then you can enter it into your calendar in a particular time zone, and it, it actually shows up at the right time in that time zone. Well, but the daylight savings time confuses things, though. Right, and, time, zones actually, time zones actually incorporate daylight savings time into themselves, right? So if you can... Good. Yeah. If daylight savings time happens, it's still at the same time in Pacific time. Uh, if you pay it at UTC and daylight savings times happens, it's still at the same time in UTC, but now it's at a different time in Pacific time. So effectively, you know, you can pick a time zone and pick your poison, 
Um, but okay, all so all right, so that's fine. So it's very clear then that this meeting time pegged to Pacific time, whatever that is at the time of the year. Okay, that's fine as long as we're clear, and that's what it'll be. No, no, totally, clarity is excellent there. Thank you. Well, we'll uh, we'll make sure it's pegged to a specific time zone as well, and uh, and publicize it for people who are managing their own calendars. Um, other than that, uh, thank you everyone for for attending, and we will see you next week on Tuesday. Okay, right. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.